Here I'm going to cover the six must-know text manipulation functions for Excel, focusing specifically on text extraction. I'm going to cover the six that you need to know. I'm going to explain how they work and then give you some good examples and then combine them for a slightly more complex example. So this tutorial should give you the foundation you need to go ahead and build text manipulation functions for your own spreadsheet. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. First things first, our data is set up as such. We have the text over here that's going to be used in the text manipulation functions and our functions over here. So let's start off with the left function. It's a really nice, good, basic one, very important. And it allows you to get characters from the left of a cell. It's a very simple syntax, as you can see here. Let's go ahead and enter it from scratch equals a left tab. We have only two arguments, the text argument and optional argument number of characters. So the text is just the text from which you would like to get something from the left. So I want to get values from the left of this text, so I select the text. If you don't input number of characters, it'll just automatically get the first character. So the first character in this case is one. But what makes it really powerful is you can tell it how many characters you want to get. So if you want to get the first three characters, then you type a three for the second argument, and you get one, two, three. For these early examples, everything will be hard-coded, so the number of characters will be hard-coded. But I'll show you how to make that dynamic in the combined function section. The next function that you must know, similar to the left, is the right function. As you can imagine, it gets values from the right of the cell. Very simple syntax equals right. Same arguments as the left function, text, and number of characters. So we select this. If you don't input number of characters, you get the first character from the right of the cell. If we tell it how many characters we want, it'll get that many characters. So three to get the last segment. And if your data is all structured exactly the same, such as this with part numbers, where you'll always have the same number of characters, then the left and the right function are amazing. They work so well, you don't need dynamic formulas. You can just use these hard-coded dudes, and it'll save you a ton of time. But now let's move beyond the most basic. We want to go to the mid function. Mid function allows you to get something from the middle of a cell. So... Syntax, you can imagine, equals mid. This one has one additional argument, and all are required. We have text, start number, and number of characters. So the text, the cell, or the text you want to use, comma, start number. This is the position where you want to begin to extract text. Let's say I want to get B. So my start number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So start number 5, number of characters, I only want the B, that is one character, so I put a 1, and we get the B. It may seem not terrifically helpful because everything is hard-coded, but what I want to show you here is just how simple at least it starts. So the left, right, and the mid are the most important functions. Everything else is going to build upon them. These are the foundational functions for almost all text manipulation extraction functions. So next up down here we have where it starts to get interesting, the find function. So for the mid function, I just counted what the start number should be. But using the find function, I can supply that number automatically to the mid function. So the find function, this dude right here, is going to allow you to get... Well, actually, let's see what Excel says. They probably have a great little description. Returns the starting position of one text string within another text string. And it is case sensitive. And it has three arguments. The text you want to find, where you want to look for it, and the start number, which is optional. So what it's going to do in this case is it's going to look for a dash within cell A2. And it's going to return the position of the very first dash. The very first dash we can see here, 1, 2, 3, position 4. So when I hit enter, it should return 4. Now you can see how we could use this in the mid function to return 5. 
because 5 is just the first position after the first dash. So we could combine the find function with the mid function to return that. And we'll talk more about that in the combine function section. But now, this may get a little bit confusing, but I want to cover it here because we're on find. You can nest them. So in this example, we have nothing for start number. But if you wanted to find the second dash, so your data is highly structured, you're always only going to have two dashes, OK? And you want to find the second one, well, how do you do that? You want to start looking after the first dash. So we can't reverse the way find searches. We can't search from the end of the cell to the left, which would be amazing. We have to simply search after the first dash. How do we do that? Well, we use the start number argument. So we have this guy right here, which it may look confusing at first, but it's just two find functions. We have find text, same thing, dash within a2, but the start number has another another find function in it. It is the same find function as the first one, dash a2. So this one, if I select it and hit F9, you'll see it returns 4, just like this one does. Perfect. But if I leave it at that, so let me undo that. Let me remove the plus 1. If I leave it at 4, start searching at 4, it will simply return 4. So we need to tell it to start searching after the first dash. So once this guy returns 4, we need to add 1. So it will look after. So plus 1 makes it find the position of the second dash, which is 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Perfect. Now, it may seem a little bit confusing with a find function, but it is so helpful. And we use it in conjunction with the mid, right, and left to make our life easier, which I'll show you in a moment. Now let's get to two other functions, which you may not have heard if you don't use text extraction too much. Len. It's a very interesting one, which by itself is almost completely useless. It gets you the length of the characters in the cell, or the count of characters in the cell. So how many characters are in this cell? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's all. just says there are 9 characters in this cell. Easy peasy. Now, why do we need that? Just store it in the back of your mind. We'll use it momentarily. The next thing I want to show you, it's not specific to text extraction, but it's used quite often, and I feel like it's important for you to know that. So it is, I'm going to say ampersand or concat. Let's make this guy a little bigger. So oftentimes when you're working with text functions you want to combine things. And let's say you want to combine the pieces 1, 2, 3, B, and CCR. There are two ways to do that. We can use the function concat or concatenate if you're in an older version of Excel. That looks just like this. Concat with however many pieces of text you want to combine. So if you want to combine a5 with a dash, then a6 with a dash, then a7, that's exactly how you do that. If you input the text, you just surround it with quotation marks. You can use text or numbers or cell references here. Every piece here is just going to be combined so that we get something right here that looks just like this. However, the way that is going to be most often used, because you don't have to surround it with an annoying formula like this, is just to use the ampersands, so this sign right here. So this example right here shows you how to do that. And all that we do is instead of a formula with commas, we separate or we combine each piece using this symbol. So you can see A5, then this symbol, then a dash within quotation marks, symbol again, a6, and so on. So every single piece uses this. This is like the glue that combines all of the pieces together. So this is how most of us are going to actually concatenate or combine text. All right, now let's get to the fun stuff. So first example down here. This one is going to say, what if I don't know how many characters there are in the first segment? 
So here I have 1, 2, 3, 4 dash b, whereas here I had 1, 2, 3 dash b. So what we've got here is a left function, just like the beginning, just like we did at the very beginning of the tutorial, the text where we want to get text, a10, right here. And now, for a number of characters, we do not hard code that. We use the find function. So here what we're doing is we're using the find function to find the first dash, which in this case will be in position 5. So if I select this and hit F9, we get position 5. But five characters would also return the dash, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then the dash is the fifth character. So that's why we have minus 1. So if I remove minus 1, I get 1, 2, 3, 4, dash. So you just pop on the minus 1 here so that we do not get the dash. So now you can see where find is combined with the left in order to allow you to get a dynamic number of characters from the beginning of a cell. Easy peasy. And now let's say you wanted to do the same thing but get the values from the right of the cell. So here we use the right function. Remember left and right and mid are always going to be the foundation of the functions. We get the text, easy peasy, and this is the number of characters. So here is where it begins to get a little bit more difficult. We still know that our part number will always only have two dashes. So this is just the same as the nested find that we did up here. We have a find within a find. We add the plus one here just so that we can find the second dash here. So that's all. We find the second dash. That's all we're doing. So now that we have the second dash, we know it's in position seven. But the right function needs to know how many characters from the right to get. In order to figure that out, we must get three. CCR is three. So what you can do is take the total length of the cell and subtract the position of the second dash. So right here, we take the total length of the cell, F9, to calculate that in cell right now. And that equals 10. So 10 minus 7 is 3. That gives us the correct number of characters to return from the right of the cell. So you can see this is where a len comes in really, really handy. And it's kind of confusing to think about this at first, but it's used quite a lot in more advanced text manipulation functions. So let's back that up. Here we have our basic write function, text to get. Here we do, just like we did above, our nested find function to find the second occurrence of the dash. And to find how many characters to get after the dash, we simply subtract this number from the total count of characters from the cell. So that's all I'm going to cover in this tutorial, but this should really start to give you a very strong foundation for building more complex text manipulation and, and extraction functions, and for making all of this stuff work within your workbook. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.